What is up guys? I'm Brie Kay with theseofthesounds.com and in this video I'm going to talk about the world of music, NFTs, and Web3. But first, this is the intro. I want to start covering certain music projects that are involving NFTs and Web3 here on this channel but I realized that I can't really do that until I introduce my audience to NFTs and blockchain technology as a whole. So I'm going to briefly do that in this video. Now, let me start by saying that I am going to explain everything to you as simply and briefly as possible because I do not want to lose you. I understand that if you're completely new to cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, NFTs, Web3, all of this might sound like boring gibberish to you and make you want to close out of this video. But if you are an artist or a music producer or both, please do not close out of this video. I believe that this might be the beginning of a new era of technology that will be commonplace like five to 10 years from now. And there are artists and producers already doing interesting and lucrative, lucrative things with this technology. And at the very least, you should know about it. Now, let me also say that I am no expert, but my brother is, and I'm really close to him. So I know a thing or two. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding, but my brother introduced me to NFTs in August of 2021 and I've been buying and selling NFTs ever since. I now have a collection of over 40 NFTs and I've sold somewhere around like 20 NFTs. So nothing too crazy, but I am familiar with the culture and the more I immerse myself in it, the more I feel like dang. My artists and producer friends need to know about this. I'm not saying this to hurt anybody's feelings, but I have to be real and I'm included in this statement. My fellow music people, we are always late to the technology party. And it's basically like we show up and everybody already knows everything and owns everything and we have to play catch up and I just don't want that for us anymore. And I said all that to say that if I say some terms in this video that you don't understand, please go and look them up or ask me in the comments before just giving up and clicking out of this video. Now, enough of the disclaimers, let's get into this. So first of all, what is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token. Fungibility just refers to the ability to be exchanged or replaced. So non-fungibility means that the token is not easily exchanged or replaced. And why is that? I'm so glad you ask. Because of something called the blockchain. There are some major in-depth explanations of what the blockchain is, but I am going to give you my little briquet explanation, okay? The blockchain is basically a ledger or a record. Now, most popular NFTs are sold on the Ethereum blockchain. And Ethereum, in case you're not familiar, is a cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency is stored in what is called a digital wallet. There are several digital wallets out there. Some of the more popular ones are MetaMask, a Coinbase wallet or a Phantom wallet. And you can exchange fiat currency like the US dollar for cryptocurrency and vice versa. So in layman's terms, basically what happens when you buy an NFT is you connect your digital wallet to the Ethereum network and the network recognizes that you have Ethereum as your cryptocurrency in your digital wallet. It allows you to exchange your cryptocurrency for this token and the blockchain makes a note of it so that anyone can verify this transaction on the blockchain and verify that that token officially belongs to you. The Ethereum network is not the only network that NFTs are sold on, but for the other networks, the process is pretty much the same. It might sound like a lot, but it is a very streamlined and transparent process for verifying ownership and authenticity. Now, in your mind, can you see how a streamlined and transparent process for verifying ownership and authenticity might be useful for artists and producers? Me too. Now let's move on. NFTs thus far have been largely released as art collections, which can be purchased using cryptocurrency. Some of the more popular collections that you might have heard of or you might have seen floating around the internet as people's profile pictures or as the NFT community calls them, PFPs, are Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks, and Cool Cats. These different projects release their collections as limited pieces of art that have traits that were randomized by a computer to create 
unique one of one pieces of art. This means that each NFT in a collection is unique, but some are rarer than others. The three projects that I just named, which were Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks and Cool Cats, they're all only available on the secondary market. And as of this morning, you can't buy a Bored Ape for less than 112.95 Ethereum. The price of Ethereum fluctuates, but today it is valued at around 3,000 US dollars. So the cheapest you can get a Bored Ape for is around $338,850. What a steal. Now, most NFT projects do not reach the level of success that Bored Ape Yacht Club has, but I just want you to know that this stuff is really going on in the midst of economic turmoil. People are really making this money and spending this money. Now the common criticism that I hear from people who don't really know much about NFTs is, isn't it just a JPEG? Like, couldn't I just take a screenshot of it for free? And the answer is yes, you could, but you could also download a picture of one of Van Gogh's Starry Nights from the internet for free, but that's not going to get you the hundred plus million dollars that selling an authentic Van Gogh Starry Night would get you because your screenshot or your download is not authentic. NFTs are similar because again, ownership and authenticity are proven by the blockchain. So blockchain or it didn't happen. Now that you kind of have an idea of how NFTs work, I want to talk about what some music artists and producers are doing with this technology. And before I go into this, I am not giving financial advice. I am not telling you to purchase from any of these artists or collections. I'm just sharing some of the cool and creative ways that music people are immersing themselves in this NFT culture. So the first company that I want to talk about is Royal.io and it was started by the EDM producer Blau and his friend who happened to be a developer. And I feel like there's a lesson in that. If you have friends around you that have different gifts and talents, start using them. Make sure they get their cut though. Anyway, with Royal.io, Blau was the first artist to utilize this and he used his platform to sell the rights to a single. And basically there are tiers of tokens and people can pay a certain amount for the lowest tier of token, the middle tier of token, and the top tier of token and get a larger portion of the rights with each tier as well as other incentives. Blau did this with his single and then he had Nas and Nas did I think two singles. And then he had Verity and she did a single, I believe. And then they had Ollie Raps and Ollie Raps was the first artist to do an EP and they've had other artists since then. But with this, artists are able to decide if they wanna make, you know, like a quick turnaround of money. They can sell some of their rights to some of this music and the incentive is that you get to have or own part of that song and collect some of those royalties, which is pretty cool. Another artist or project that I wanna talk about is Spotty Wi-Fi. Spotty Wi-Fi was a spinoff of a CryptoPunk, and I mentioned CryptoPunks earlier. They were a really popular and successful NFT drop, and it was actually a free NFT drop, but Spotty Wi-Fi had this CryptoPunk, and he decided to turn that CryptoPunk into a rapper. So he's an NFT rapper. He has this project and he releases songs and people get to buy those songs as nfts and it's basically like a collectible version of the song spotty wi-fi actually recently partnered with a company called audius which i'll probably talk about in a future video but he partnered with a company called audius for a remix contest for a song that was featuring bun b and I actually participated in this remix contest and the top five winners from this remix contest were going to get to join a Twitter space with Spotty Wi-Fi and Bum B. And we were also going to get, I think a free NFT of that song that we remixed. I ended up coming in fourth place, which was really cool given that I just wanted to have fun with the contest and just see what happened. But anyway, Spotty Wi-Fi is another artist that has found a way to generate income by releasing his music as limited NFTs. And with this, he's been able to collaborate with artists like, like I said, Bumby. And he was also recently on Snoop's project because if you guys don't know, Snoop Dogg is also heavily involved in Web3 and is making his own studio in the metaverse and doing just different things with NFTs and Web3 technology. So that's pretty cool. And I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'm just gonna mention one more artist who is also doing things with NFTs and Web3 technology, and that is Latasha. Latasha has found ways to generate income using NFTs and what she does is often auction off her own personal photography or her videos as limited NFTs. She's been able to make over $200,000 
auctioning off these limited pieces. And she also created a platform with her partner called Zora, which is basically like a launching pad for other artists who also want to auction off certain art to their audiences as NFTs. If you wanna check out Royal.io, Spotty Wi-Fi, or Latasha and Zora, I will leave the links to their Twitters in the description below because in the NFT community, Twitter and Discord are basically the two main places where NFT buyers and creators live. So I'll leave the link to their Twitter and you guys can check them out if you guys wanna know more about what they're doing. I'm definitely going to be sharing more of other projects, some smaller projects, some newer projects, and projects that are still in development but I just want you guys to know what music artists are doing with this technology in case it gives you any ideas. There are lots of NFT projects out there, but NFT projects involving sound and music are still pretty new. People are getting to connect to their audiences in ways that they didn't before. And some artists and producers are even finding new audiences through NFT culture and Web3 technology. So that was just an introduction. I'm sorry if I was all over the place, but again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the description below and I will do my best to answer them. If I can't, I will send my brother to my comment section because he can answer them. If you guys like this video, please also leave that in the comments. Did you guys know anything about NFT technology? Do you wanna learn more about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you made it this far into the video, I think it's safe to say that you kind of liked it. So please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and click subscribe. And please also go ahead and click that bell so you can be notified every time I post a video with content like this that is interesting to artists, producers, and content creators like you. All right, I think that that is everything. Shout out to you for sticking around, even if a lot of this information just went over your head but we're gonna get through this together okay there will be more videos to come on this subject thank you guys so much for watching i am brie k with these are the sounds.com and peace out